A romantically hopeless pilot written by Jordan Emiola and Jared Summers. <laughs> All right, cold open. Exterior elementary school playground day. Recess is in session. Phil, uh, Phil uh, a five-year-old, is a scrawny kindergartner with thick glasses. He walks up to Victoria, five blonde. Phil holds up a flower. Hi, Victoria. I picked this flower for you. Thank you, Phil. You're so sweet. <laughs> Do you think someday you, you could be my first kiss? <laughs> I'm so excited for my first kiss. My dad told me it's romantic. Ew, I don't want to kiss you. I kiss anyone but you. Bob, five, another kindergartner, overhears the conversation. Anyone? What about me? I haven't been kissed yet. <laughs> yeah, yes, anyone else except for Phil. Can we do that now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bob and Victoria share their first kiss. Other kids see this. I want my first kiss. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Boys form a line in front of Phil. They take turns getting their first kiss from Victoria. <laughs> this is so groovy. Uh, who else, except for Phil, wants to kiss me? I do. <laughs> Girl jumps in a line for their first kiss. Oh man, this hurts. But Philip Jarrett Garrett won't quit. I'll find that romantic thingy soon. Interior radio station studio night. Phil, now 45, sits with a multi-line phone and a microphone. Nearby, Samantha operates a soundboard. The clock on the wall reads 3.45 a.m. Phil is on the air. And that happened 39 years ago today. My entire <laughs> kindergarten class, except for me and the teacher, kissed Victoria. How long after that did you get your first kiss? 17 years later. <laughs> That's so pathetic, but I am uh, not surprised. But hey, it's 3.45 a.m., time for my favorite new Wednesday segment. That's right, it's Win a Date with Phil Wednesday. Okay. First person who calls us wins a date with me. You all know the rules. Yes, we do, unfortunately. Phil owes me a dollar for every minute we do this segment without getting a phone call. The clock starts now. Oh, Samantha starts a timer. Phil stares at the phone. Come on. I know it's, I know it's now 3.46 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, but there's no better time to win a date with me. Come on. Come on, audience. Well, I think I won $47. Let's go for a new record, folks. Mama needs to fix her car. Anybody. Anybody can call. I, just win a date with me. I'll pay for half of it. The phone rings. All right. That's what I'm talking about. No, I was going to get food delivered to the studio. Mm -hmm. Phil puts the caller on the air. It's Victoria, but all grown up. Caller, congratulations. You've won a date on Romantically Hopeless. Did I win? That was easy. Uh, so you're going to date me? Yes, I'd love to. Huh? Uh, don't you want to see what I look like first? Nope, I am game. Chances are you're better looking than Phil. No, that's truth. I can tell but I can tell by your voice. You don't recognize my voice? Should I? It's Victoria. I feel really sorry that I didn't kiss you that day. I want to make it up to you with a date. Y you do? Really? You have to go. It's in your contract. Yep. I must do anything for love, and I have to talk <laughs> about it on the radio. Wonderful. Uh, can you pick me up around noon? <laughs> Stay on the line, Victoria, and we'll get your address. Yes! I'm going on a date with a girl that never kissed me. And <laughs> cold open. Act one. Interior. My Mama's Biscuit Soul Food Restaurant. Wait, Day. Phil, Matt, Eugene, and... Matt, can you do the bios really quick, actually? Oh, sure. Is Sorry it about that. Right. Yeah, my, my bad. Um, all right, bios. Main character, Phil, 45, the world's biggest hopeless romantic and a dorky, lovable loser. He's an AM radio show host from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Samantha, 22, Phil's board operator and production assistant. She's a millennial who drinks on the job and gives Phil shit. Karen, 25, Phil's younger sister. Quirky, doesn't know what she wants to do with her life and has a crush on Zach. Uh, Zach, 34, Phil's roommate. He's the most naive and nicest guy in New York City. Jerome, 27, Phil's coolest friend. 
He runs a family soul food restaurant with his parents in Harlem. Eugene, 35, is Phil's oldest friend. He's short, husky, and owns a funeral home. Cool, we good to move on with act one? Yeah. Great. All right, act one, interior, my mama's biscuit soul food restaurant day. Phil, Eugene, and Karen eat breakfast. Phil, I think there's a reason she didn't kiss you. I think reuniting on AM radio is romantic. But <laughs> only old people, creepy people, and weirdos listen to his station. Jerome enters from the kitchen with a plate of biscuits. I'll be fine. Just got to be positive. It's only one date. I don't see what could go wrong. <laughs> hey, remember that time you dated a blind woman and, and she still found you ugly? Yes, I do. Remember the 36 woman, women who gave you the let's just be friends speech? I sadly remember every speech in explicit detail. Thank you, Karen. Remember that woman who you found out had a penis? Yes. You know, I bumped into Michelle last week. She's going to be a father soon. <laughs> Zach enters the restaurant with a spring in his step holding a manila envelope. It's happening. It's finally happening. I'm getting a divorce. I'm going to be a free single man. That's great news, Zach. All I got to do is go to prison and get the paper signed. I'm so happy for you. It's, it's about time. Jerome's parents, Pops and Mama Walker, 50s, enter from the kitchen with several suitcases. Well, kids, we're off to the land of jazz and whiskey. What land is that? It's St. Louis, and we packed a lot of whiskey. I can't believe my parents want me to run this place all by myself. Who do you expect to help me? Ah, you'll figure it out, son. We're on vacation now. You know the rules. If there's an emergency, then you owe us a new restaurant. Oh, I gotta go, too. I gotta pick up my hot date. <laughs> Does she have a penis? Pops is only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> exterior, exterior, street, night. Phil pulls up to a building with a gate and guard post. Phil sees correctional officer Carl, 40s. Phil shows him a piece of paper. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm, I'm looking for this address. Can you help me? You got the right address. Who are you looking for? Victoria Angus. <laughs> oh, you mean violent Vicky. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Yeah, it makes sense. She's getting released today. Released? The gate opens and three women walk out. Phil's childhood crush is no longer Victoria. She is now violent Vicky. She walks with her two other cellmates, Cindy and Mindy, 30s, burly, rugged, and badass. Free at last? Free at last, bitches. Thank God and the almighty, I am free at last. We're all very proud of you, Violent Vicky. Uh, please don't murder anyone. No promises, Carl. No promises. She walks over to Phil's car and gets him a shotgun. Cindy and Mindy get in the back. Good luck, man. I uh, hope you're not the first one she murders. <laughs> Phil is freaked the fuck out. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me you were in prison? Would you have come to pick me up? No. That's why I didn't tell you. Yeah, dumbass. By the way, these are my friends, Cindy and Mindy, <laughs> and they just got released too. That <laughs> asshole. Is this that fool from the radio? Yeah. Be nice to the fool. He's taking me out on a sexy ass date later. <laughs> Another car pulls up next to Phil's. It's Zach's car. Phil, what are you doing here? Um, going on a date. With three prison chicks? Can you handle three prison chicks? <laughs> I don't know if I can handle one. Hey, hey, well, good luck, buddy. Try not to get shanked. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Interior prison visiting room day. Zach sits at a table across from Brooke, 36, red hair, freckles, and intimidating. Please, Brooke, just sign them so I can be a free man. I'll sign the divorce papers, but under one condition. Anything. I want your big, sweet, fat dick one more time, right here, right now, in the kanji. In the kanji? Do they clean it after people do it? Who cares? I haven't had your dick in months. I married you for that huge, juicy piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just once though, right? You, one last time and then you'll sign it. Yeah, just once more. She Prison puts her pinky out. He sticks his pinky out. Prison promise. 
Interior, my mama's biscuits day. Violent Vicky, Cindy, and Mindy pig out on soul food. Phil, Jerome, and Eugene talk. What happened to your hot date? I didn't tell you to bring him here so I could feed jailbirds. Look, Victoria and I are going to go on a date later to an arcade, but they were hungry. So you brought them here? They were talking in the car about how they wanted jobs to become working members of society, and you need the help around here. I'm down like a dead clown. When do we start? Did I hear job? I like money. <laughs> Could you start today? Yes, sir. By the way, who's your cute friend? Cindy rests her hand on Eugene's shoulder. Mindy snuggles the other side of him. Eugene is smitten. <clears throat> yeah, what's your name, dollface? Eugene Lipschitz. Eugene, do you like to buy women chocolate? <laughs> yeah, because we just love chocolate, baby. Chocolate makes us horny. Do you like horny things? Oh, horny things are my favorite. <laughs> Interior conjugal visit room, Dave. Oh, Back in Brooke. Here goes. Back in Brooke, do it hard in the kanji. Yes, yes, you're killing me. Uh, yeah, you like this farewell, Dick? You're killing me! <laughs> hey, hasta la vista to my long, strong schlong. You're killing me! Oh, yeah, I'm killing you. Brooke you like that? responding. <laughs> Still you no like response. That? Huh? How much am I killing you? Still no response. She falls over on the ground. Did you come? <laughs> End of Act 1. Act 2, interior, arcade, night. Phil and Violent Vicky play whack-a-mole on their date. I like to use my fist instead of the mallet. It's more bloody. <laughs> she whacks them good with her fist. <laughs> Goddamn chipmunks. She misses them all and it goes in the hole. Oh, you think you can get away from me? I'll show you, stupid chipmunk. It's actually whack-a-mole, not whack-a-chipmunk. She reaches into the hole and pulls out the mole. <laughs> Cord snaps and it breaks the game. Where are my tickets? Did you, <laughs> did you just kill that mole? <laughs> she reaches into the hole again and grabs the entire roll of tickets. Oh yeah, look how many tickets I won, sweet cheeks. Yeah, that sure is a lot of tickets. You sure showed that mole. They walk, uh, they walk to the prize section. They see several trophies and one is of Boo Boo, the Hanna-Barbera character. I'm gonna get you this because you're my Boo Boo and I'll always be your Yogi. That's so sweet. Thank you, Yogi. She sees an employee. Yo, ticket mofo, how many tickets for this trophy? Uh, miss, I'm afraid we can't accept your tickets. You broke the whack-a-mole. Well, I guess it's for free then. Come on, I got another place I want to go to. She picks up the trophy. Miss, you can't just leave. Oh, ticket mofo, look what I did to those chipmunks. Imagine what I could do to you. Please enjoy your trophy, sir. Yahoo! A trophy! <laughs> Interior, my mama's biscuits night. Uh, night. Cindy and Mindy clean the tables. Jerome supervises. Nicely done. Keep up the good work, ladies. Jerome walks to the kitchen to count inventory and overhears Cindy and Mindy talking. Girl, this is total easy street with a dope like that as boss. I know, right? Speaking of dope, where are we at? Cindy takes out a bag of weed. <laughs> yeah, as long as we keep running game on him, we have it made. They pound. Jerome is not pleased. Then the outside door opens. Yo, shh. Might be the fool. Eugene enters. Hello, ladies. Hey, tushy face. Uh, what are you doing here? I wanted to bring you these. Eugene unveils two miniature statues of Cindy and Mindy made out of chocolate. <laughs> oh, crap on a stick. That's a mini Mindy and a mini Cindy. <laughs> Sculpted us from chocolate? You must really like us, don't you? I also got you roses and candles. Eugene grabs bags of flowers and candles. That's a lot. I also went to bed, bath, and body works and got you some body works. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene grabs another bag from BB and BW. If you like me, like I like you, maybe someday we could be boyfriend and girlfriend. 
that's what you are. Mm. How about this, love muffin? <laughs> How about if you get us an apartment and pay our rent every month, and then one of us will become your girlfriend? Really? Are you sure about this? Cindy pulls Mindy to the side. Hey, Mindy, we're criminals. Who's going to rent to us? And if Eugene wants to pay our rent, let's take advantage of it. Okay, I'll do it! <laughs> you will? <laughs> That's our honey bunches of cuteness. Exterior, gun store, nice. Phil and Violent Vicky pick out guns together. Mm, what do you think about this gun? From what I understand about guns, if it's shooty, then it's good? Hey, hey, Phil, hmm? I, uh, I didn't just come here to buy a gun. You, you didn't come here to shoot me, did you? <laughs> no, silly Manili. I, um, I actually came here to ask you a question. What's that? Violent Vicky gets down on one knee. I know. We've only been dating for a day. But I should have kissed you 39 years ago. She reaches into her pants and takes out a, a ring box. <laughs> Go on. Don't stop there. I always thought I'd be doing this part, but whatever. Philip Jarrett Garrett, will you marry me? Really? We, we haven't even known each other for 24 hours. But yes, yes, I will. <laughs> Wonderful. I knew you'd say yes. Now, um, can you buy the guns and put them in your name? Anything for my future wife. Phil looks at the cashier. These 11 guns, please. Interior, Phil and Zach's apartment day. Zach cries. Karen is consoling him. Oh, I have the dick of death. <laughs> it's not the dick of death. It's the dick <laughs> to a better place. <laughs> I can't believe I killed her. Don't blame yourself. She tried to kill you too. Matter of fact, that's why she was in prison. Oh, I miss the good old days. I'm a bad person. You're not a bad person. It's just sometimes good people kill other people with their dick. <laughs> Phil and Violent Vicky <laughs> enter the apartment. Hey guys, we got some big news. My wife is dead. Congrats, buddy. <laughs> now you get all the freedom you wanted. <laughs> no, I accidentally killed her. Uh, we've all been there. Uh, wait, are you serious? How? With my dick up to ass. You killed her with your dick? That's sick. Wait, 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 wait. How did this happen? Uh, I was just trying to give her what she wanted, and oh god, and now I gotta plan a wake at Eugene's funeral home. He's cremating her right now. <laughs> What's the big news you have? Maybe it'll cheer us up. <sighs> Victoria and I got engaged. Phil, so, what? How? When? I proposed our wedding's tomorrow morning. I'm the new woman for the rest of Phil's life. Violent Vicky stares at Karen with an evil glare. That's how my wife used to glare at me. <laughs> <laughs> Interior, my mama's biscuits stay. Cindy and Mindy enter. Jerome has a table full of hot, delicious food on the counter. Hey boss, this food looks bomb. What's the occasion? I just thought I'd cook something yummy for my two favorite employees. That's chill. Cindy and Mindy start eating. But first, a few rules I wanted to go over. From now on, whatever you eat will be coming out of your paycheck. Cindy and Mindy, stop eating. And I'm going to need you to clean the toilets and bathrooms from, from now on. In bus tables every 20 minutes, and you'll be doing the dishes. Jerome points to a heaping pile of dirty dishes. I laid off the dishwasher this morning, seeing that I have you two here to help out. This is not chill anymore. Exterior, Hudson River day. Karen parks her car. Zach has an urn on his lap in the passenger seat. If it's cool with you, do you think I can have some alone time with her to say goodbye? Oh, sure. I'll wait in the car and try to think of ways to stop Phil's wedding. Zach exits the car, uh, exits the car and walks towards the Hudson River. Remember when we used to come here and you used to threaten to take my life away? A tear falls from his eyes. Good times. Good times. Two mobsters carrying a body bag next to him and throw the bag in the river. You didn't see nothing, capiche? Yeah, no, I know the drill. My wife did the same thing. What are you doing here anyway? 
No, I killed my wife by penetrating too hard, so I decided to throw her ashes in the river. Hey, that's a good idea. We should cremate people before we chuck them into the river. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know a dude. His name is Eugene Lipschitz. That's smart, getting rid of the evidence. Thanks for the tip, guy. Hmm. <laughs> Interior radio station, Studio Night. Phil is on the radio with Violent Vicky. Samantha drinks from a wine bottle. Yes, it's Romantically Hopeless, the show where we talk about our many problems finding love. But not today. Today, I found my true love. That's right. That's right, boo-boo. <laughs> oh, boy. Yep. She was a prison chick, but it was always meant to be. We're getting married right away. We're Dharma and Greg in it. Do you sound any older, Phil? <laughs> the phone rings. Phil picks up. Hello, caller. Did you call to congratulate us on our engagement? Nope. I'm asking you to back out. Are you insane? Hey, listen, crap face. You call here one more time and tell him to back out. I'm going to track you down, and I'm going to pull your scrotum from your throat, and then I'm going to decorate my wedding cake with the juice of your scrotum. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. The caller hangs up. There's been a lot of violent scrotum talk today. Let's just stop telling people to call in. Let's talk about something else. Okay. Um, well, where do you want to get married? Yeah, where's the party at? Let's get wasted on Phil's dad. Oh, I got it all picked out. It's the perfect spot. It's, this place is magical, like Disney World. Oh. Minus the fun. Where's that? Rickers Island. Oh, hell no. You're getting wasted at home. Wait, the prison? Yes. You see, almost my entire family's there, at least my prison family, which is still like half my family. I don't know. Can't we go somewhere more romantic, like literally anywhere else? <laughs> no. Rickers Island is romantic. Yeah, for those who like to get murdered before getting their cake. But, but for my wedding day, I always dreamt of, of a place that was a more elegant than, than a prison. I am picking up what you're putting down, but I'm putting it back down. <laughs> she gives them an extra violent look. Okay. Okay, if it means that much to you, we'll get married in prison. That's my boo-boo bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will be something. <sighs> Interior, my mama's biscuits, kitchen, day. Cindy and Mindy scrub dishes. What the hell? I thought this job was easy. All this work is worse than the work we had in the joint. I know, this is torture compared to home. The back door opens and Eugene enters. Ladies, you're all set. I did it. Oh, what'd you do, sugar nipples? I got you an apartment. <laughs> Already? It's been less than a day. Yep, I decided to just give you my apartment. <laughs> And I'll live in my funeral home for the time being. I just moved all my stuff out. Holy crap, that was fast. I also went to Ikea, where I bought and built you new furniture. And I decorated the house with Feng Shui. <laughs> I repainted four rooms and installed new carpeting. So, about our deal. Who wants to be my girlfriend? <laughs> Cindy and Minnie look at each other. I promise yeah. I will be with my girlfriend every waking second <laughs> of the day. I also will kiss her every hour on the hour. I will love her like soup and crackers. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mindy. You be his girlfriend. <laughs> Not of the idea. You be his girlfriend. <laughs> I don't want to. He's not my type. He's not my type either. I have to be somebody's type. <laughs> Your name starts with a C, so alphabetically, you go first. Uh, uh, okay, how about this? Let's just both be his girlfriend. She turns to Eugene. Eugene, sweetheart. You would rather have two women instead of one, right? No, I'm cool with one. Haven't you ever heard of double or nothing? 
No. One is fine with me. I'm already <laughs> at nothing. <laughs> Good job, Cindy. Real smart move. Okay, sweetie. Give us, to, give us till the morning, and I promise one of us will be your girlfriend. Okay. It's been nine years anyway. What's another day? But then after that, I'm going to be like Sting. Every breath you take, I'll be watching you. <laughs> Eugene exits. Cindy and Mindy are pissed. What are we going to do? That dude is clingier than a wet tampon. I know, I know. We don't have money to leave the state, and he's not going to leave us alone. Not to mention our new boss, Sergeant Dickhole. Mindy, there's only one solution. Only one thing that'll fix this. We need to go back to prison. End of Act 2. Act 3. <clears throat> Interior. Uh, is it Rickers or Rikers are we going for? <laughs> Let's go Rikers. <laughs> Rikers Island Prison. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Karen, Zach, Jerome, Eugene, Cindy, and Mindy stand at the altar of the prison church. Phil, you can't do this. She is bat crazy nuts. Okay, this may be my only chance to get married, Karen. I have to give it a shot. I I've seen the guns you bought. You probably will get shot. She's not gonna shoot me with the 11 guns that are in my name. Duh. This, this isn't right. You didn't even invite mom and dad. Get out of this while you still can. Just give her a chance. Victoria is my cellmate. I, I mean, soulmate. <laughs> Will you guys talk some sense into my brother? I actually think she's out of Phil's league. Yeah, me too. And if she makes you happy, buddy, then go for it. Do you think Cindy or Mindy will marry me too? Gee, golly, I hope so. <laughs> Here comes the bride plays as Violent Vicky walks down the aisle. She seems to be looking for some someone in attendance. She reaches the uh, she reaches the end of the aisle. You look stunning. I always do, Boo Boo. Mm -hmm. The priest begins the ceremony. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness. Father, let's just get to the vows, shall we? Enough jibber jabber. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Please don't murder me. Uh, would the groom like to go first? Uh, yes, I would. Victoria Laverne Angus, you are my favorite listener that I've ever had. The kiss we're about to have is meant to be. I'll always be your boo-boo, and you'll always be my yogi. Violent Vicky keeps searching the audience. Where is she? I don't think she's here. Yeah, I don't see her anywhere. Who are you looking for? Don't you want to hear my vows? Another prisoner yells out. <laughs> she's dead! What do you mean, she did? She got killed by a dick! <laughs> Violent Vicky looks at Zach. Who did you kill? Oh, are you talking about Brooke? You killed my prison wife? Your, your what now? I, I thought she was my wife. <laughs> you killed both of our wives? I guess. I'm having this wedding for her. I wanted to make her jealous so she'd wait for me. I knew you were too good for me. Violent Vicky is outraged. You killed the best prison wife I've ever had, and I've had seven prison wives. I'm, I'm sorry. I feel horrible. Well, now I gotta kill you. She Whoa. steals the priest's Bible and chases after Zach. He runs towards the kanji. No, don't beat me with a Bible. Somebody help me! Run faster, Zach. She's quicker than she looks. Alarms go off. Correctional officers run into the ceremony. Hey, quick. Now is our chance to go back to prison. Get the shank out. Victoria, you, you still want to get married, right? The violent Vicky gets a few beatdowns on Zach with the Bible. Suddenly, Cindy shanks Eugene. Ouch! What was that for? You're too clingy. Mindy grabs the shank and then shanks Jerome. Ow! Why? What did I do? Thanks for making us work too hard. Cindy grabs the shank back and shanks Phil. Oh. That's, that's for all the times I had to listen to you in solitary confinement. Mindy grabs the shank and is about to shank Karen when Karen grabs a shank from her dress. Don't even think about shanking me. I came prepared. What the hell, Karen? You think I'm going to go to a prison, with, prison wedding without a shank? <laughs> Mindy and Karen try to shank each other. 
Let's dance, prison chick. Violent Vicky sees them and yells to another prisoner. Prison wife number five, pass me my shank. Violent Vicky's fifth prison wife passes her a shank. Oh, I had a feeling I was going to get stabbed. The other prisoners start chanting. Shank fest, shank fest, shank fest, shank fest. Correctional officers run from every direction. One officer handcuffs Cindy. Another officer tackles Mindy. It takes six officers to stop Violent Vicky. That's it. We're putting you back in prison right now. Yippee! We did it! Thank God we don't have to end up with these fools. End of Act 3. Tag. Interior radio station, studio night. The clock on the wall reads 3.09 a.m. Samantha drinks a 40. Phil is on the air. You're listening to Romantically Hopeless. So this week, everybody in my wedding party got shanked. No surprise there. I learned how much love hurts, <laughs> literally. It always does for you. Phil feels his wound. The phone rings. Phil puts the caller on the air. It's Karen and Zach. Caller, you're on the air. It's your sister and Zach. Hmm. What's going on, guys? Not everybody in your wedding party got shanked. I didn't get shanked. Yeah, and I got beat with a Bible before I got shanked. Oh, yeah. So sorry <laughs> to my prison audience listening. Yes, my sister did not get shanked. Don't tell them that. Why did you bring it up if you didn't want my prison audience to know? Damn it, Phil. Now I'm going to get shanked in my sleep. It's okay, Karen. You can have one of my 11 guns. End of show. <laughs>